Today, XP Pen enters the large pen display arena with the Artist 24 Pro. Now, now we're going to break this down in just a couple of seconds. The Artist 24 Pro is a pen display, it means you draw on it. It needs to be connected to a computer or laptop. In other words, you can't just use it on its own. The first thing you'll notice is it comes in a huge box. It's big. It's a big one. Now I'm John and I stopped an alien invasion whore just to make this video for you people. And when I'm not doing that, I do reviews and tutorials on things used in the creative process. Now remember who you were supposed to be and drop a like and a comment if you like this video to help the YouTube algorithm. And if you watch to the end of this video, I will personally stop Bill Gates from putting a microchip in all of your heads. But let's be honest, some of you, it's not a bad idea. With the quick unboxing now, you got your smudge guard glove, the barrel shaped pen holder with the pen inside and an additional spare pen just in case you lose it like I'm constantly doing. A pen holder with the screwdriver you need to screw it in the side and a USB-C to USB-A adapter. A USB-C cable and your power brick and power cord. HDMI for video, a bunch of documents I won't read and a microfiber cloth to keep the tablet surface clean. And there we have it, your nice bit of kit. Right, so let's pay some bills. The active area of this display is 23.8 inches. It's a 24 inch model. It's an electric magnetic resonance EMR digitizer. That means no battery. It's also the gold standard digitizer technology for pen displays as far as I'm concerned. Resolution is a QHD. We're going to talk about this in a second. 25 by 60 by 1440. Panel type is IPS. 16.7 million displayable colors. A contrast ratio of 1000 to 1. The color gamut is 90% Adobe RGB. Finally, it features a combined 20 shortcut keys, which is really 10 on each side, plus an assignable red dial also on each side for left handed or right handed use. Now, the increase in resolution does a couple of things. Number one, obviously, it's going to be a lot clearer, a lot crisper image. On a 24-inch display like this, it's uh, sort of a must-have as opposed to nice to have. One thing a lot of people don't know how to explain with the increase in resolution is also the increase of PPI. Now, PPI stands for pixels per inch and is the main reason why your cell phone or your iPad or something like that looks so great because they really just pack a gazillion pixels inside that tiny little screen. Same thing applies to a display of this size, except it's the opposite. What we've typically had is we've had a very low PPI because the screen displays have been stuck at 1080p. A display of this size at 1080p would have came in around about 92.56 pixels per inch, whereas now the QHD comes in at a much higher 109.08. That's a big jump and is evident in the picture quality I experienced. Now here's the thing with the display. The light uniformity is great. Now you know what an IPS you can get that light bleed and, and this display was a higher quality. I really didn't have a lot of that and what I did have was quite uniform. I didn't have any issues with the matte screen protector like coming off and peeling or any of that bubbling or any of that stuff. Uh, and I used it for three weeks so that's a pretty good test of time. Uh, there are a couple of omissions of lack of uh, laminated or bonded display and the etched glass. Now, it's hard to slam a company for things they don't advertise that they have and entering in a market where the, the competing device is twice the amount of money, it's also hard to make that argument. However, we're going to do parallax tests in the end and I find the edge glass sort of subjective. Some people like the texture, some people don't like the added noise and grain it adds uh, to the display sort of muting the colors. Let's talk about the included PA2 pen which we mentioned before is battery free. Pressure levels are 8,192 and it features tilt support at about 60 degrees. We will show that in use in a second. Now the pen doesn't have an eraser in the back and it features two programmable buttons. It's lightweight and it's got a slightly rubberized grip where you would hold the pen. The pen nib is very stiff. It barely has any movement at all. And while it's barrel shaped throughout the length of the pen, it tapers off just a bit as you get towards the back. All in all, this pen should feel familiar and it feels great. The pen holder is convenient. Twisting it off at one end reveals the included pen. Conversely, twisting off the other end is going to reveal your 10 spare nibs and nib remover, which is easy to use. You stick the pen tip into the hole, you twist it slightly, and you yank the nib out. You screw the pen holder in on either side of the tablet with the included screwdriver. What you might not notice is there is a little rubber thing in there that you need to pull out and you screw the clip holder in. 
Finally, the cap to the pen holder doubles as a pen stand for your desk. Hey, you know, I get so excited in these videos because every time I get to play with a new pen display, I get as excited as, a, you know, like around Christmas time when you're at your grandma's house and you take all your clothes off and just put your boots on, you go out sledding in your underwear with all your cousins. Yes, everybody does do that. No, I'm not crazy. Right? We're not crazy. On the back of the unit, pre-mounted, they have a, um, a VESA compatible stand. Now the stand that comes with it, as you can see, has multiple different levels of position and is really quite rugged. It's not like these kind of devices in the past. This thing is really sturdy. And as you can see from this other video, goes fairly flat. Now it doesn't go totally flat, which I, I don't know why you'd want to use a display this size totally flat. Anyway, I found it does the job, although it took some getting used to uh, how the mechanism worked. You can see me fiddling around my thumb to make sure it locked in place. And also you don't want to stand it straight up on its, you know, like a 90 degree because it's just not good for a display this size to be that way. It'll, it'll tip over. So let's talk input and outputs. First of all, the Artist Pro 24 has two ports for like USB hubs that you can connect your smartphones and things like that to charge. Sort of like this. The next is going to be HDMI for your video output into your PC or laptop, followed by USB-C, which is generally for data, but we're going to go over some different connectivity options. Finally, this last port is where you plug in the power brick. So the simplest answer for the most obvious question is this device supports data and video over one USB-C connection if your laptop or PC supports it. You'll still need power either way. This is a 24 inch display. You will not be powering that, you know, through the USB-C cable. However, if you don't have a single USB-C solution on your PC and laptop, that's what the USB-C to USB-A converter is for so that you can plug the USB-C cable into a USB-A port on your PC and laptop. And then you'll also use the included HDMI cable to hook up the video. Either way, you don't lose any functionality, you just add in a cable, which we use two cables for audio and video all these years anyway. Still, for a minimalist setup, that one cable solution is awfully nice. The display controls for the Artist 24 Pro are touch sensitive buttons, most notably for power and all of the uh, display option settings, brightness, contrast, and etc. I won't cycle through all of them other than this uh, graphic on the screen. However, I thought it was important you'd know how to turn this on. Easiest way for me to hit this every time is to come up across where the LED would be, and then hold your finger for just a second. It's not a tap type motion. It's kind of like you need your finger on there a second for it to register. We mentioned the express keys earlier paying the bills. However, I wanted to note, uh, especially with the red ring, I've mentioned this before on other devices I reviewed for XP Pen. I really like the red dial. It has uh, some clicks to it. It doesn't make noise, but it's got that tactile feedback. So when you're adjusting a brush or you zooming in and out, it's got a little click to it. So it doesn't spin all over the place. In addition, one of the buttons is dedicated to cycling through what the red dial can do, whether it's zoom or, you know, brush size or et cetera. And you can change that button to wherever you want. So if you like it on the top, the bottom, the middle, it, it really doesn't make a difference. You could change that on a driver. Speaking of which, we're not going to fully go through the driver like we usually do. However, just want to make sure you know where to go to calibrate your pen, the setup as you're seeing here, the express uh, key shortcuts, and the mappings to where they go. Note there are options to export your configuration and import it should you have to reformat or, you know, your machine or, you know, mess around with the driver or something like that if you're having a problem. Application specific profiles are available. So if you need something for Photoshop, for example, versus Clip Studio Paint, all that's baked into the driver. Despite not being a laminated or bonded display, you can see the parallax on this is really not bad at all, especially for a 24 inch. You do get that EMR lag where the cursor drifts slightly behind. That's characteristic of EMR. There's just nothing you can do about it. Where the pen tip and the cursor meet is very accurate. And for a display of this size, the parallax was negligible. We're gonna bang out some quick, slow diagonal lines and checking out the result here. You know, there is a little bit of wobble to these lines. It's not perfect. Uh, it's well within the acceptable limit. I mean, I've seen some other reviews where they might have been worse. I do have a newer version of the driver. It's actually dated post-July. So that could be a contributing factor, but 
Besides, you guys know how I feel about these stupid line tests anyway. What do you want to do after this? I don't know. I'm feeling kind of hungry. I mean, we can hit the drive through but you're paying this time. Oh. Oh, what do you, what do you know about that, Phoenix? We're not so crazy to go pick somebody else a five piece now, are we? Moving on to tilt. Now, the main knock with tilt with some of these pen displays is that the cursor tends to jump around. So what I'd like to use is this uh, program called Expressi. So you can clearly see the tilt is working and that the pen tip and the cursor are aligning. Now, does it move a little bit? Especially Expressi isn't the most accurate program to begin with. You can see as the pen is moving, you know, you get a thin line, you know, when you're moving up and down. And when you have the pen tilted in any kind of direction and you are getting the full 60 uh, degree range of tilt. Now back in Sketchbook Pro, we are going to do our quick line test that we like to do. And again, what we're testing here is we're, we're looking for EMR lag, which we expect. We're looking for any kind of degradation in a line quality with fast lines, for example. And for the most part, this guy holds up okay, particularly here when we're getting a nice gradient from light to dark. But here's where the truth is right here. We go from light to medium to a harder pencil stroke. And we get a really nice full range of gradient. Now I will say, drawing with this pen display, and it could be uh, the matte protector, there was a little bit of a learning curve for me because I go through so many devices. And I'm glad I waited to do the review to get adjusted to the initial activation of this pen. And it was worth it. I don't have any lag in the lines with fast strokes. The pen pressure is accurate. I don't have any problems with pen accuracy, especially in the corners. The matte screen protector does its job. It blocks out the sunlight and it does add some feedback. It's not paper-like, but it's more matte-like so you don't feel like you're drawing on glass which I can't stand. And finally, you see these black lines. I I'm looking for shoelace effect, and I found once I learned to control my strokes, I didn't mess with any of the pen pressure settings. I don't like to do that when I'm doing a review, or I would disclose that, but you see, once I really got used to it, my lines are actually pretty good. I start very thin, I end very thin, and I'm getting a full motion of pressure throughout the line, which is what I'm looking for without a lot of artifacts. Now the included stand is nice. What I wanted to show is a last kind of thing is I have an Ergotron arm. I have the HD sit model. I mounted the XP24 uh, Pro to it. It's really easy to do. There's only four screws on the back of it to remove the stand and then it's just a standard vest mount. So look, we put this display through every test I can think to do and it, it comes out pretty good. XP Pen's entry into the large display space is a pretty good one. They deliver a really good pen display experience despite not having a laminated bonded display and some wobble in those slow diagonal lines. But this is why we end with a quick run through of a drawing experience to show that's not really evident when I'm using the pen real time and not trying to simulate some kind of a problem. Overall, I enjoyed using this display and if you're in the market for a larger size pen display, you owe it to yourself to give this a look, especially with the pricing discrepancy with the competing models. Hopefully you crazy kids like this video. If you are interested in any other reviews on XP pen displays, why don't you check out these two guys over here and I will check you guys out in the next one.